The electron configuration of ions is a pretty straightforward extension of what we've already learned about electron configurations. So let's take a simple example. So we want to figure out the electron configuration for sodium forming the sodium plus cation. So we know that sodium tends to form a plus one charged cation. So let's think about that. So let's do the electron configuration for sodium. So looking on our periodic table, we're going to start from the beginning. Um, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and we have 3s, and it would be 1 for sodium, 3s1. Okay, so now that's the electron configuration of sodium. We can write that in shorthand notation by realizing that the first part of this electron configuration, well, that's just the electron configuration for neon. So we could rewrite this as the same electron configuration as neon. And then the extra bit would be 3s1. If we wanted to draw a picture of that, then we would say in the planetary model, we'd say that sodium has 11 protons in the nucleus, so that's its atomic number, so we have plus 11 for the nucleus. And we've got our n equal 1 shell, our n equal 2 shell, and our n equal 3 shell. So now we're going to draw in our electrons. So the electron configuration tells us that we've got two electrons in the n equal 1 shell, um, eight electrons in the n equal 2 shell, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then one electron in the n equal 3 shell. So now we're going to form the sodium cation. So to form the sodium cation, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to remove an electron. So we could write this as an ionization reaction, Na metal going to Na plus plus one electron. So we're going to remove an electron. So now the question is, which electron do we remove? Well, the answer is easy. You're going to remove the electron that is easiest to remove, and typically that will be the one on the outside. So remove the outermost electron. And in our case, that's going to be this guy right here, right? So the one that's in the 3s orbital. So we're going to remove that electron. So if we move remove that electron, um, what would be the electron configuration that we would get? Well, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then we might write 3s0 just to remind us that we've taken an electron away, but usually we will omit this part. And what you notice is that now the electron configuration of the sodium cation is the same electron configuration as neon. Very good. So let's consider another example. Let's imagine that we've got an oxygen atom and we're going to take two electrons and give them to the oxygen atom to make oxide, O2 minus. So we know that oxygen typically forms a negative two charged ion. So if we look at the electron configuration again for oxygen, um, we're going to use a shorthand notation here. Go ahead and do that. So here's it's the electron configuration of helium. Then it's 2s2, 2p, and we count over on the periodic table, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2p4 is the electron configuration for just an oxygen atom. So now what we're doing is we're adding two electrons. So where are those two electrons going to go? Well, they're going to go in the outermost shell. So if we're moving the outermost electrons, when we're adding electrons, we're going to add them to the outermost shell. So that's going to give us an electron configuration that's this for um, oxide. That's the same as helium. Then it's 2s2, and then 2p. And we had four, and now we've added two electrons to it these two guys, and so we've got 2p6, right? All right, so if you think about it, this electron configuration is now the same as the electron configuration of neon again. So one way that we could say that this electron configuration for this ion is the same as that for neon, and this electron configuration is the same as that for neon, we use the term isoelectronic, just to mean um, any uh, species that has the same number of electrons. So um, sodium plus, is isoelectronic with neon, and it is also isoelectronic with oxide. So they all have the same number of electrons as neon. Well, that doesn't mean they're going to behave exactly that way, right? Because they've got different charges, they've got a different uh, nuclear charge in their nucleus, so their behavior may be very different, but in terms of the number of electrons, they have the same numbers. So iso means same there. And so that's the way we uh, figure out the 
electron configurations of ions. We'll do a couple of other special cases. We'll look at some transition metals. But I wanted to real quickly highlight a very important point that we've just discovered. So way back when we first started learning about ions and elements, we learned that there were patterns that particular elements tended to form uh, certain kinds of ions. So for example, the group one metals tend to all form uh, plus one charged cations, right? The halogens, group seven, they tend to all form negatively one charged anions. So if we think about it, um, there might be a reason for that. If we look at the noble gases, uh, the noble gases are group eight, right? Group eight on the periodic table, they tend to be very unreactive. So they don't tend to lose or gain electrons or want to share them with any other chemicals. So they tend not to form bonds to many other things. So our conclusion is that group eight, and so those are the noble gases, must be particularly stable because they are so unreactive. And if you look at their electron configurations, what you'll notice is that they all have uh, filled either shells or subshells. So there must be something about completely filling your shell or filling uh, your subshells that makes an atom particularly stable. So if we go back up here and we look at sodium and oxide, now we can see uh, a sort of an explanation for why it is that sodium is going to tend to want to form a plus one charged cation. So looking at this, we see that we can get a completely filled shell. So the n equal two shell here will be completely filled if we lose this one electron. So if sodium loses that one electron, it then has that nice stable noble gas configuration. So it becomes the same as a noble gas, isoelectronic with a noble gas. That must be particularly stable. So why is it that oxygen tends to gain two electrons and not one or not three? Because if it gains two, it will have an electron configuration again that is the same as a noble gas. So now let's look at one other example. Let's look at the case for a transition metal. So we're going to look at the case for uh, copper. So copper is interesting because it's one of the exceptions to our electron configuration. And we're going to imagine that copper forms a uh, copper one ion. So we want to see what the electron configuration is going to do for those guys. So let's write the electron configuration in shorthand notation. So our previous noble gas to copper is argon, looking on our periodic table. And then we're at 4s. And we would think it would be 4s2. And then counting over on copper, it would be 3d9. But we've learned that that is not the electron configuration because there's an exception for copper. So it's argon. 4s1, 3d10. So filling this 3d subshell, there's a particularly good reason for wanting to do that. Filled subshells are particularly stable. All right, so there's the electron configuration for plain old copper. And we want to form, so that would be for copper. And we want to form the copper plus ion. So again, we need to remove an electron, right? So the way we've written this electron configuration, you may be tempted to remove the electron from that 3D orbital. But resist that temptation. Don't do that, right? Because this 3D orbital is not the outermost shell. So these 4S electrons, on average, are further away from the nucleus. So they are probably going to be the one that we remove first. So remember, we always take electrons away from the outer shell. We always add electrons to the outer shell. So find the shell that has the biggest n quantum number and add or remove electrons there. So the uh, configuration that we're going to get when we remove that electron is going to be argon and then 4s0. But normally, we will just leave that out. And then we would just say 3d10. So that would be the configuration of the copper plus ion. So we end up with one of these half filled uh, subshells, no, completely filled subshell, 3D10. And, and that gives some kind of stability to the copper ion when it gives up its electron like that. All right, so that's how we do electron configurations for ions. We simply add or remove electrons always from the outer shell.